Hi, I'm Renee Strauss, Dairy Fat Provider Health and also a professional life coach. Hi, I'm Dr. Ligila Strauss. I'm also a director at Revita Health and the medical practitioner doing the practical work at Revita Health. We are so excited about this wellness series we are able to do on the YouTube channel of Olivia Estate. And I think something that a lot of people ask, a question that a lot of people have is if you look good, if you look at yourself in the mirror and you look good, does it mean that you are really healthy? Thank you for that question. That's um, something that's very dear to me because I really feel that I love to encourage people to live a healthy life. Mm -hmm. But why do we need to do that? And no, it's not just to fit in your beautiful pair of jeans <laughs> or to have a certain number on the scale. Um, being healthy is much more than just weight. Because even people with a normal weight can be metabolically unhealthy. And that's what we need to focus on, is to be metabi metabolically healthy mm -hmm. and not just to have a certain number on the scale. So what does metabolic health mean? What is metabolic health? How do you measure it? <laughs> okay, metabolic health is seen as um, you need to have um, five things in your life. And let me name them for you. Mm -hmm. You need to have a normal regulated blood sugar. Okay. You need to have a normal level of triglycerides. Mm -hmm. That's one of the components of our cholesterol. And also a high level of HDL, which we call the healthy cholesterol. Mm -hmm. You also need to have an optimal blood pressure mm -hmm. and also a normal waist circumference. Mm -hmm. And all of these five things need to be achieved without having to take medication okay. for any one of them. Oh, wow. Okay. And most of these things or most of these parameters we are able to measure at Revita Health. How can you make sure that you're staying healthy at home? Okay, there's um, one measurement that's very easy to, um, that you can do at home is to measure your waist circumference. Mm. For that, you just stand up in front of a mirror or you can ask your spouse or friend to help mm. you with that. Then you take two breaths in and out. In and out, you need to measure in tape. Mm. And about two centimeters lower than your belly button, mm -hmm. almost at the edge of your hip bones. Okay. You take that tape measure, you put it around your waist, mm -hmm. and then you measure the centimeters. And for women, it shouldn't be higher than 80 centimeters. Mm -hmm. And for males, it shouldn't be higher than 94 centimeters. Okay. Because according to the Heart Association, it puts us at a higher risk to develop chronic diseases like cardiovascular and um, also um, renal and uh, any metabolic disease. Okay. Okay, so that's a very nice way to actually measure your health, actual health, without standing on a scale at home. So how do we achieve metabolic health? Well, uh, metabolic health can be easily achieved with a bit of hard work, obviously, but if you've got the right principles in place, it's something that's really achievable for everybody. And if you look at one of the previous videos that we recorded, we talked about the seven cornerstones mm -hmm. of a healthy lifestyle. And if you really focus and put in some effort in all of those seven cornerstones, stones, you can achieve metabolic health. Okay. And we have actually four very powerful tools <laughs> in our own homes that can help us achieve. That aren't medication. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that is our fork. By that I mean what we eat. Mm. Because food is medicine. Food is information for our DNA, like mm. I say always. Mm. Then also the clock. Mm. Why? Because when we eat is as important as what we eat mm. and also um, with the clock we can measure our sleeping because we need that seven to nine hours of optimal sleep mm. and third one is our running shoes and i don't mean that you need to go and run for kilometers at a time around your house doing some high intensity interval training in your own living room mm. some yoga exercise and the fourth one is body weight because with our body weight and even if you take a a sandbag or anything a bottom, exactly a just doing some weight bearing exercises mm -hmm. we can also achieve metabolic health through that so one of those points that are really interesting to me is the clock and you've mentioned when you eat yes when is it right to eat <laughs> that's a very interesting question and there's not a one-size-fits-all answer for that mm -hmm. but there's a lot of evidence coming out now and you will hear the words intermittent fasting time restricted feeding being used um, every day now and that means simply that we eat in a certain time window and why is that so important mm -hmm. 
we've got the same DNA as our ancestors. Mm -hmm. And they used to eat, they used to start eating a few hours after the sun came up. Mm -hmm. And they used to stop eating a few hours before the sun went down, mm -hmm. just as the sun went down. And um, that puts our bodies in, or we, as I say, we still have that same DNA. So our bodies want to eat that way. Mm -hmm. And by that, we activate a system or a process called autophagy. And with autophagy, it just means that we activate a process in our bodies where the damaged cells and proteins can get eaten away mm -hmm. and our bodies go into a state of healing and nourishing wow. itself. Wow, so apart from sleeping, um, when your body is restricted from food for a certain amount of time, you also go into this healing process. Exactly. So how does that time restriction work? Is it the same for everyone or is, you know, how do you how do you go about intermittent fasting yes. or time restrictive eating? Um, there is a couple of strategies that's been proven easy to follow, mm. and please do not see this as medical advice mm. or see it as um, we advocate that each one should follow this. Listen to your body, and especially ask your medical practitioner before you start any new feeding program. Yes. But one of the easiest ways I coach my patients with is start by. Um, eating your food in a 12-hour window and fasting for a 12-hour window overnight. When you get that right, go into a 10-hour eating window okay. and a 14-hour fasting window. And the optimal sweet spot is 16-hour fasting window with an 8-hour eating window. Okay, okay, that is so interesting. And we, we know that we have a lot of tools um, that we can use to stay healthy. How does our environment impact our health? That's also very important mm -hmm. and um, unfortunately most of us nowadays live in an, we call it an obesogenic environment. Mm -hmm. That is, we have too much food available, we eat too much food in too long a time period and give our bodies too little time to heal and to rest. Yes. And we are so fortunate here on World Vie Estate to have all this lovely parameters around us to go and jog, mm -hmm. we have the gym, we have our friends close by for that connectivity and the community. Mm. Um, yes, it's very important, your, your environment, and we need to really watch out in what environment we put ourselves in. By that, I don't mean that you should suddenly all move to uh, mm. another area. In your area, try to focus on mm. the food you eat, the sleeping you get, the connectivity with people, those seven cornerstones that mm. we, we often refer back to. Thank you very much. That was so informative. I really hope and I trust that you also found this informative and valuable. Thank you very much, Dr. Ladivia. And yes, stay healthy, stay fit and active and work on your metabolic health. And then you will eventually look good as well. Exactly. <laughs> Take care.